The second day of the Division 2 Private Beta, we get the chance to play the endgame mission. We could choose between three specialized characters that were fully equipped with signature weapons and high-end weapons and gear items. Turned out that the survival specialization character was one of the best equipped and balanced character and in this video I will show you the full run of the invaded mission Jefferson Trade Center on normal level solo. My intention was to play on hard level but turned out that I didn't confirm the hard level button, so the mission you're about to see is normal level. I noticed that just when I started editing this video and that is also telling you something about the user interface in the game which is pretty different than in the Division 1 but also way less intuitive and in my opinion poorly made. I read somewhere that the user interface looks like it's made primarily for the consoles and that might be the best explanation why it feels so strange to use at least on the PC. I won't bother you with UI anymore and before we move on to the gameplay I will show you briefly the build of my character and the weapons I was using. If you watched my last video you might remember that I was talking about the house SMG. Well here it is and let's go together through the some of the main features of that weapon and later we will go briefly through the gear items and talents. As you can see my main weapon is the SMG called MPX and it is a high end weapon. The main so-called active talent of this weapon is named Measured and here is the description of that talent. The top half of a magazine has plus 15% rate of fire and minus 20% weapon damage. The second part of that talent says the bottom half of the magazine has minus 25% rate of fire and plus 20% weapon damage. You will easily notice how this talent is working when we start the gameplay. The second talent of this weapon is called Holstered Talent and it is named Stable. It gives you plus 15% stability. That talent is coming from the handgun I am having equipped on this build. It is holstered and I am not using it, but it gives an extra talent to my primary weapon. This tells you that the choice of your pistol will be very important in the Division 2. And finally, the third talent is a weapon handling talent and it is named In Rhythm. While equipped, enemy kills can reduce active skill cooldowns. This is very good talent and it allows you more frequent usage of your skills, cause you are taking a lot of enemies down as you will see in the gameplay. Now on to the weapon modes. You can mod your weapon like we used to do in the Division 1, but the big difference is that now the weapon modes will come with positive and negative stats. You can clearly see that we have a scope magazine, underbarrel and a muzzle mod equipped. I will not go into details and read all of these stats, but it crossed my mind that maybe sometimes you might be better off without the mods. Of course that should be tested and require a deeper insight into the whole stats of your character build, but as I say I won't go into details because this is beta and some of those things are still in a developing phase and they can be changed when the game comes out. Anyway, let's move on to the gear items. I said in my last video that this character have nicely balanced build and I will show you now why I think so. This build is very well optimized for the SMG. As you probably know, in the Division 2 we have gear items that are made by many different brand manufacturers. And it turns out that the Sokol of Concern have an items that have a main stats perfect for the SMG weapons. If you check out my mask, you will see that it have an anchor sign on it, same as my vest and my knee pads. That is the brand logo of a Sokol of Concern manufacturer. You can also see that the three main stats on my mask are SMG damage, critical hit damage and seeker skill power. My vest have also three main stats and they are the same as on my mask. And finally, my knee pads have all three main stats, the same as mask and the vest. That means that if you have three items from the same brand, you will unlock your main stats on those items. And this is something like a named gear sets that we have in the Division 1. So far I only see that you can unlock three main stats and will we have a six piece items in the Division 2, I don't know. But my guess is that we will. They will probably be introduced later like we get classified gear sets in the Division 1 long time after the game was released. 
Also important to say is that you can mix high-end items with superior purple items to unlock the main stats. Let's continue. My backpack is made by Mountain Hiking Pack Manufacturer and also are my gloves. You can see that by having the two of a kind gear items will unlock only two main stats and those are cooldown reduction and skill power in this case. And finally my holster comes only with the one of main stats active and that is accuracy. All in all it is a pretty decent build and I hope I managed to explain you how the builds will work in the division 2. There is a way more to it but this video is only an introduction into the build systems and it is going to be too long anyway. With that said let's move on to the gameplay. Alright guys, the first part of the video was scripted and uh, this one is not. Uh, as you can see right now I selected the hard level but I didn't confirm it and I end up playing the normal level. Uh, signature weapon, this is a crossbow, this is survival specialization and I cannot tell you much more about the uh, signature weapons because we didn't have ammo for those weapons. We get like 6 bullets in the beginning, first time you decided to play and uh, later on uh, the drops of this signature weapon ammo was so small that uh, I couldn't test honestly I don't know what to tell you I was disappointed by that I thought uh, every time you are reloading or restarting the mission you will get again six bullets for that signature weapon but no the random drops were too small for this. Uh, what, what to tell you about the uh, missions are long. There are great number of NPCs. There is uh, many waves of them. I don't know exactly uh, still for this mission the number of spawn soldiers, but uh, missions are very very long. Uh, that might affect the grinding part in this game because if we are going to have to play all those missions again again and again just to get the loot at the end it's gonna be very time consumable so I don't know there are some situations that are repeating in the game for example those soldiers that are repelling down from the chopper uh, sometimes your best chance is to wait for them pretty close and in this case I managed to take like two of them there is similar situation at the end of the game when you need to kill the boss they are spawning from the chopper and it's very important the position you are taking in this game it's not like in the division one when you play let's say legendary for example that you can do it from only one spot and that's all uh, this time it's really important that you decide when it's the time to rush on, when it's the time to stay in the cover or pull back. When you're playing those endgame missions uh, you really have to take care about the enemy drones. They are so nasty, especially if they are having bombardier drones. Uh, you should always take care of them first because not only they will do a great damage to you, they will lift you out of your cover so they are pretty annoying uh, other than that the NPCs are designed well uh, I was also playing a little bit of a dark zone there was some NPCs that looked so cool for example like there was one fully armored guy with a hammer chasing you around uh, in this invaded mission we will run into uh, robots like a walking dog robot all those Big enemies have their weak spots, uh, those big guys, fully armored guys, you really have to aim at one part of their armor to chip it off. This walking dog has also a weak spot, one of those weak spots is his uh, scope which is lighted. Uh, I noticed that if you disable that scope he is not going to be able to shoot at you and his butt, I think it's his butt is also a weak point but they're really hard to kill, I mean they're taking a lot of bullets which is okay, they are robots, they are metal devices so there's nothing wrong 
with that in terms of bullet sponges which is like the main concern for some people in a division one this time around everything looks decent i don't have any complaints about that uh, it will be stupid if you can one shot everything in the game sounds as i said in my previous video are awesome the blind fire when you are in cover it seems like it is improved it's more precise so you can use that a lot uh, as you can see they are rushing constantly i will comment uh, further when i see something important to say in this uh, mission i was using uh, two healing skills my throne and my seeker mine were repairing my armor all the way throughout the game and you saw that uh, one of the talents of my weapon is basically shortening the skill cooldowns when I kill the enemy but uh, it's not really easy to finish this mission even on the normal level you see uh, now I have to pull all the way back because if I stay in the circle this heavy armored guy is going to delete me immediately and then he's not alone here here is also a dog so as I said earlier you really need to pick a time to pull back or time to rush so it might look like a slow gameplay to you but uh, you really have to try it for yourself and then judge because uh, you're going down also in a second if you're not if you're not taking care of those enemies really quickly they will put you down and uh, you will have to go all over again uh, good thing is that there is uh, a lot of checkpoints that's the nice touch because missions are so long and without those checkpoints it will be uh, really painful to finish those missions i don't know we will probably have some even harder difficulties in the game like legendary in the division one but uh, i'm telling you this normal level is pretty hard and the hard level is even hard open beta is scheduled for uh, march 1st so all of you who didn't have a chance to play this private beta will have a chance to try open beta and these are like news uh, i thought to make a separate video about it so if you're having uh, files from your private beta don't delete them uh, because you will be able to play open beta again on uh, march 1st and it will last for four days like this one so those are some info about the future of the beta and uh, division 2 See, this dog is pretty annoying and he's following you around. Sometimes he shoots sniper bullets, like heavy sniper, like in this case, and uh, it's really nasty damage coming from the dog. But it's a nice uh, refreshment in the game. And, uh, once you kill that robot, he's gonna explode and EMP is going to hit you and all of your skills are gonna be dead you won't be able to use your skills for some period of time so you have to really time well to kill that dog because if you stay out in the open and there is a more enemy around you you're going to die because you are not going to be able to use your skill or heal yourself so we'll see what's going on Further. I think we passed this first part of the mission. It's really important to take a good position. You see this is like a long corridor 
and it's perfect to be at the end of that corridor. Now those repelling soldiers again, as I said in the beginning, your best chance is to hit them immediately. You can do the best damage by being close to them and try to kill them as many as you can. Other than that, the NPCs are really quick, they are flanking you all the time, and I have a really fun playing this invaded mission. Yeah, I died a lot, a lot of times, and because it's new you don't know what to expect from the mission, uh, you don't know exactly what's going on. I was also read somewhere that uh, NPCs will spawn in different places every time you restart the game. Basically mission is never going to be the same, so I think I noticed that by playing this couple of times. It is true, they are not spawning every time from the same place, they can surprise you. Serious trauma detected. System reactivated. Okay, I throw a nade. Uh, I have some complaints on the grenades. I saw that there is a talent which allows you to cook your grenade in your hand and then throw. By meaning, by that, by that I mean if you throw a nade it will explode immediately. But uh, if you don't have that talent, your nades are not that effective. The enemy will almost always evade your grenades. It's going to evade your grenades and he's going to run out of that grenade circle. So basically you have few of them and they are almost useless in PvE. I don't know for PvP, I didn't try PvP at all. You know that I'm not that much interested in the PvP, but uh, in PvE grenade hits are very hard. You will have a problem to hit the NPCs with your grenades. They are exploding too slow. I have to reload. All right, guys. I think I babble enough for uh, one video. From this point on, I'm not going to comment anymore. I'm gonna leave you in peace to watch the mission till the end if you want, there is like more than 20 minutes till the end and uh, with that said, drop a like, comment or subscribe if you are new to the channel and I will see you guys in my next video. Enjoy the rest of the game.
Agent in need of backup. System restored. Back up. We're trying to access the Shade database. Let's hope you stop them in time. Agent interrupt, but there's another helicopter inbound. Looks like Black Tusk reinforcements.
have backup. in need of that. System back online. Right 
Requesting backup.
trying to encircle us. any sensitive data, but I think we're okay. Good work in there. Agent requesting backup. 